president and a quorum. The secretary, we have a resolution at this point. <clears throat> yes, sir. Introduction to Senate resolutions. Senate resolution number 142 by Senator Lario. It is a resolution to commend the Honorable Norbert Nolte N Norby Charbert, state senator, for his years of exemplary public service in the Louisiana legislature and to express appreciation for his many contributions made on behalf of his constituents and the citizens of the state of Louisiana. Whereas upon winning a special election in 2009, Norby Charbert hit the ground running as perhaps the most experienced and savvy freshman senator that had not previously held political office. And whereas Norby represents Senate District 20 down the bayou, encompassing the coastal regions of Terrebonne and Lafouche parishes, previously represented by his father, the late Leonard J. Charbert, 1980 to 91, his brother, Marty J. Charbert, 92 to 96, and whereas together they were honored in the Louisiana Political Hall of Fame in 2013 in the inaugural Louisiana Political Family of Office Holder Award, and whereas during his tenure in the Louisiana Senate, Nor Norby has served as chair and vice chair of the Committee on Natural Resources, chair of the Select Committee on Vocational Technical Education, vice chair of the Committee on Finance, and as a member of the Committee on Commerce, Consumer Protection, and International National Affairs, the Committee on Judiciary B, Committee on Retirement, Committee on Health and Welfare, and the Joint Legislative Committee on the Budget, among others. And whereas honoring his rural upbringing down the bayou, Senator Charbert joined the Louisiana Rural Caucus and the Acadiana delegation. And whereas his first year in the Senate was punctuated by the Deepwater Horizon oil spill, which has a devastating impact on all aspects of his coastal district, an area that balances jobs in the oil and gas service industry with one of the nation's most productive seafood estuaries and a hub of commercial and recreational fishing activities. And he worked tireless to bring recovery to this area. And whereas Port Fouchon, located in the southernmost point of Lafouche Parish, is the largest energy port in the world, serving more than 90% of the deep water activity in the Gulf of Mexico. And whereas Norby has championed the expansion of Port Fouchon, Port Terrebonne, and all other Louisiana ports, deepening and dredging, project, dredging projects throughout the state through capital out outlay projects, creating the waterway dredging and deep water priority program, and establishing the office of multimodal commerce. And whereas in creating the Office of Multimodal Commerce, Senator Charbert's strategic vision of building the state's infrastructure in coordination with the needs of business and industry, while acting as a conduit for stakeholders to influence public priorities was realized. Whereas through his, throughout his career in the Senate, Norby stood <clears throat> as an unwavering advocate of higher education and job training as the standard bearer for his alma mater, Nichols State University and Fletcher Technical Community College. And whereas during tough budget times, he zealously protected these institutions and even improved campus infrastructure with construction of state-of-the-art buildings, now home of Chef, Chef John Falls Culinary Institute at Nichols State University, which offers one of a few culinary art four-year degree programs in the country. And whereas witnessing the many life experiences of family and friends, Norby has developed a passion for health care, particularly care for those on the lower end of the economic spectrum. And whereas when a change in federal policy regarding reimbursements dedicated that the old charity hospital system cannot survive in its current form, Norby played a key role in the creation of a public-private health care partnership widely considered as a model for other eminent preserved and health care safety net and kept the Leonard J. Charbert Medical Center renamed in honor of its founder and Norby's father in 1992 in Homa open and whereas embracing his French heritage he has strong supported Cotafil through the years and whereas always looking for opportunity to improve the efficiency of government Senator Charbert cut through yards of red tape by allowing the Department of Culture, Recreation and Tourism to utilize private vendors for service and kept many state parks opening to the public. And whereas spending most of his life on the banks of Bayou Little Cayu, Norby has personally experienced the coastal land loss and survived numerous hurricanes and floods that have repeatedly devastated his area in a few, way few outside of the region can comprehend. And whereas throughout his tenure in the Senate, Norby has been 
most vocal and knowledgeable advocate for hurricane protection, coastal pro re restoration projects, while immersing himself in the policies and priorities of the coast. And whereas through his leadership and de de decade of service on the Senate National Reso Natural Resource Committee and as the Senate's representative on the Coastal Protection and Restoration Authority Board, Norby has positively impacted those policies and priorities by enacting much needed reform. And whereas his personal experience with hurricanes, storm surge, saltwater in intrusion, and coastal erosion has a direct act impact on Norby's decision to seek the vacant Senate District 20 seat in two, 20, 2009. And whereas he graduated from South Terrebonne High School and attended the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. And whereas while attending ULL, Norby created many lifelong friendships and grew to appreciate the beauty and unique culture of the prairie region of Acadiana. And whereas, despite his love for ULL, the Bayou called him home, and Norby transferred to his beloved Nickel State University, participating in student government, theater, intramural sports, while graduating with a bachelor's degree in government. And whereas, two of his greatest life experiences during this period include studying abroad in Costa Rica and running with the Bulls in Spain. And whereas, upon soon after graduation, Norley moved to New Orleans and began his career as a political consultant, working for candidates of both parties in statewide and congressional campaigns. Whereas, a consultant, a bipartisan <coughs> spirit was ignited in Norby, whereas, as an elected official, he always sought to find common ground, seek out pragmatic compromises, and ensure that government meets the needs of the people in a financially responsible manner. And whereas living in New Orleans in August 2005, Norby was one of the last evacuations to leave prior to Hurricane Katrina, making landfall and overwhelming the city. And whereas after the storm subsided, Norby relocated to his hometown of Chauvin, and four weeks later found himself flooded out along with more than 10,000 other residents of Lower Terrebonne Parish by the devastating storm surge resulting from Hurricane Rita impact in the West. In, in 2008, his home and community once again, were once again ravaged by back-to-back -back catastrophic four, Hurricane Gustav and Ike. And whereas previously content public life, Norby was compelled by these disasters to make a difference through public service, and where Norby is the son of the late Leonard J. Charbert and Biona Charbert and brother of Donna, Marty, Lori, Lenny, and their spouses, O'Neill, Kirby, and Patty, respectively, and uncles to numerous nieces and nephews, as well as a growing number of great nieces and nephews. And whereas Norby loves to garden and frequently utilizes his produce, when he cooked at family gatherings and community events, and whereas participation in local civic clubs and charitable organizations such as Colonel Athletic Association, Crew of Homeless, Knights of Columbus, and Reggae Festival and Charbert Foundation are activities he particularly enjoys, and whereas Norby's tenure in the Senate comes to an end, he is confronted by the many relationships he has made with colleagues, staff, and other members of the capital community, as well as honor of serving not only his people down the bayou, but all the citizens of the great state of Louisiana. Therefore, be it resolved that the Senate of the Legislature of Louisiana does hereby commend the Honorable Norby Charbert for his faithful public service to this body, his district, and the state of Louisiana, and does hereby extend to him the best wishes of his colleagues to continue success in his future endeavors. Senator Alain moves all members of the Senate, with the exception of Senator Chabert, co-author the resolution. Not objection, so ordered. Senator Alain moves adoption, not objection, so ordered. Senator Honorable Norby Chabert. I didn't write that one. <laughs> I want to uh, thank whoever did write that one for limiting the number of French words that Glenn Kemp had to pronounce. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you, Glenn. Um, you know, given my family's legislative history, 
Um, these farewell speeches probably mean a little, a little more to me than most people. I've had the privilege of hearing many of them in my lifetime, and you know that uh, when you're a public servant who's saying goodbye to their public service, it's, uh, it's a different kind of speech than the ones that uh, everybody on this floor has given time and uh, time again. The first one I can remember hearing in this chamber was Senator Tom Casey. Um, he was of New Orleans, and I, and I thought the world of him. Uh, for those that you, of you that knew him, he was, he was a gentleman, a scholar, and uh, he embodied being a senator. I, uh, I was 12 years old in the Louisiana State Senate. It was my universe, politically. I was too young to understand why anyone would leave the Senate without being defeated in an election. And importantly, more, more importantly, how could anybody replace somebody like Tom Casey? But of course, life goes on. Tom Casey became the executive counsel for the governor, Governor Roma. And then he was replaced by an unkept rabble rouser from the House by the name of John Hankel. We all going to get replaced. Life will go on. I've been struggling to find the words uh, to properly express, express to you, the members of this body, what it was like to grow up here in that chair, running around these halls, watching our state work and fail and recover from so many things. But we never kept, we never stopped trying. We didn't always succeed. But to be a kid here, a lot of y'all brought your sons and your daughters and your grandkids, and you can see the wonder in their eyes when they look at these marble columns, when they see those gardens and they get to run around and play around with them like I did. And they get up on that big porch of the Pentagon Man, there ain't nothing like it. Or when they get the opportunity to sit at your desk all day. And uh, I know that when you bring them, I've tried to go and walk over and tell them a few words. I always say that uh, I came here when I was your age. And for those of you who have not been in my office, I only keep a few pictures in it. And none of me, save one. And it's of a little six-year-old boy, seven-year-old boy with a page boy haircut sitting at that desk. And uh, if anything, it just reminds those that don't know that I've been here for a little while. Ain't that right, Senator Thompson? And my siblings are going to tell you that even though Dad had served uh, in both the, you know, two terms in the House, I'm probably the one that was lucky enough to get up here the most with him. Uh, every summer, I'd come up for about a week. Spend some time running back and forth uh, between here and the Pentagon, drinking as much Dr. Pepper from that vending machine we got in the back as I possibly could, and jumping up and down on that chair until Shorty Baudouin liked to pull me out by my ear one time. And I have a collection of the little badges we used to have to wear. And I, I was so excited when I got to take those pictures. And it's like a yearbook photo album of me growing up. The hairstyles changed a little bit and got a little mustache. Uh, and it's funny because everybody remembers that six-year-old boy I was talking about. And uh, not too many remember the uh, 17 and 18 and 19 and 20-year-old boy I was when I was working for Marty when, when he was in the Senate. That's really when I learned a lot. But we left, and I, and I kind of get a little torn every now and then when everybody tells that story of what well, his father served and his brother served. And I always, I don't like the dynastic sound of that because there was a break in that service. And I did spend a long time away from here. And uh, I think that's a big deal that, you know, 
when you leave some place that is such a part of your life and you come back to it for the first time, it overwhelms you more than I've, I've been overwhelmed today. And they always ask me, what's different? And my answer is the same today as it was when I first got here. Now they record everything <laughs> on this mic in committee, in subcommittee, in any hearing. The people on your phones are recording you, everything. In those days, unless LPB interviewed you on the state we're in, or you were from New Orleans, and some big debate was going on, a Baton Rouge, or you, I think y'all had TV back then, didn't y'all, Senator in Shreveport? Unless you were from the major markets, you weren't on TV, they didn't record nothing. And now, they even stream you live on the internet, and to, like I say in committee, to the millions listening around the world on the internet, how y'all are? Y'all good? Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, I don't necessarily think those changes are bad. I think they're very, very good. I see Senator Adley back there used to say, uh, sunshine's good for the process. And it certainly provides a lot of sunshine. And it certainly allowed me in 2007 uh, to tune in from that green kitchen table I got in my apartment that so many of you have joined me to eat at on Sunday nights when we cook over there. I've been ha I bought it with my graduation high school money, and I still have it. Things mean stuff to me. And I sat at that table still struggling with Katrina and Rita, what it did to our state, what it did to my home, what our people were going through. And uh, I was about as far away from this place as you could possibly be. But I tuned in that day because um, a fellow I'd watched my whole life was giving his farewell speech over on the other side. And um, you know, there's few people that have served in office who have left a lasting impression on me like John Alario has. In my house, he was spoken very, very highly of because he was a friend, he was an ally, and he fought for the same things that we fought for. And that was important to my family. And I don't have to tell you, he's a man of few words, but when he speaks them, they're to be heeded. He gets a lot of capital outlay, but he don't take a lot of credit. And when he needs to, he shares it with you. That's leadership. And I heard him speak about it that day. And, uh, you know, he lets his chairman lead. He doesn't get involved. He don't meddle. Don't get to meddling. Unless he has to get to meddling. But that's rare, and I appreciate it. And I'll be honest with you, uh, when my father was dying, uh, he passed on how to be a good senator to my brother Marty, who was in a heated campaign at the time to replace him in the Senate. He said, Nick, this is how you do it. This is how you become a good legislator. He says, when a tough time comes and you got a difficult choice to make on a bill, read the bill. He said, then go talk to the lobbyists for it, and then go talk to the lobbyists again it, and then go back and read the bill. And when it comes time to vote that machine, he said, Nick, you go and vote with Don Kelly. <laughs> I love Don Kelly, too. Tarver gets that. Tarver did the same thing. Marty passed that lesson on to me, except he said, read the bill. Talk to the fars, talk to the against, read the bill. And if you got to make a tough choice, vote with Alario. And he wasn't the president then, but where Senator Carter is sitting, that's where he sat. And where Senator Price is sitting, that's where I sat. And I thought it was a blessing. I thought it was a blessing. Now, Mr. President, I'm sure you're going to hear a lot of words like these coming in the coming days. But my service to this body and to my people have been better because you have been my president. I thank you for your counsel, for your leadership, and of course, 
your late night ice cream uh, over at the apartment. But most of all, I want to thank you for being my friend. Help me. Thank you, Mr. President. Now, I shared that story with you about my father and Marty. It's a true one. It was given literally on his deathbed in our family home in Lil' Caillou. I was 13 when my dad first sat me down and told me he had cancer. <clears throat> and that what the coming fight would be like. It was one of only two times that I'd ever seen him cry. But his cancer was first discovered at South Louisiana Medical Center, the state hospital on the east side of Homa, a hospital that he fought to have built while serving in the house, the same hospital that bears his name today. His, cancers was, his cancer was discovered on a machine that he got funded through HB1 while he was serving two terms on finance. He fought his sickness hard for three years, he spent most of his last session here with a radiation pack strapped to his side. They'd wheel him in on days he couldn't walk for the pledge and the prayer. And I think it's okay to talk about it now because I think the statute of limitations ran out, but uh, Marty was more or less the senator at that time. Dad was on the phone and he was watching closed circuit. Marty couldn't come to the mic but he was very much the senator. And coming to this mic is important to us. We know what it means. And though my dad was present for every major vote they needed him on, including the historic vote that gave Louisiana a lottery, he would never come down to this mic, to this well, and deliver a speech again. 1991 was an election year. My father was a fighter. He never thought he would not be able to run in the fall. But prior to qualifying, when it became clear he wasn't going to beat the cancer, he made a difficult decision and announced he wouldn't run for re-election. His political consultant, Marty's political consultant, my political consultant, the legendary Roy Fletcher, he put together a spot that would run only locally on HTV and call a cable down the Baya to announce to his people of Terrebonne and Lafourche that he was retiring from a long career of public service to fight for his life. For those of you who did not know him, <clears throat> Leonard Chabert grew up in the 10th Ward of South Lafourche. In the Bayside side town of Golden and Cutoff, he quit school. He joined the army. He survived the Korean War. Managed to get a GED while he was enlisted. He came home. He married my mother Viona. He became a father. He graduated from Nickel State University. He became a school teacher and a small businessman. He would eventually go on into politics, first serving on the school board then served two terms in the House, followed by three terms in the Senate. In his last one here, he was both the Chairman of Revenue and Fiscal Affairs and the President Pro Tem. All that, but he was never able to tell the body that he loved and respected goodbye. That changes today. A. Chabert released the following statement today. Quote, the last 20 years serving the people of Terrebonne and Lafourche along the bayous and Grand Isle has been both an honor and a challenge. Only in America could one of your own from a below average income background have the opportunity to make a contribution to his constituency that I, Litter J. Chabert, have had as both your representative and your senator. 
Throughout this entire 20-year period, I have dedicated my life as your representative, and most recently as your senator, serving as chairman of the Senate Revenue and Fiscal Affairs Committee and President Pro Tem, securing programs for the people in our parishes to provide infrastructure and job opportunities for every one of you. I am proud of the $600 million of projects I have sponsored in these turbulent times to get a fair share of Louisiana's resources for our people. South Louisiana Medical Center, $250 million and over 700 jobs. Coastal Zone Restoration and Hurricane Protection, $100 million. Roads and Bridges, $150 million. Senior Citizens Care, $5 million. Preservation of Fishermen's Rights. Expansion of Nickel State University, over $30 million. While reflecting on these accomplishments with a very deep sense of satisfaction that I have done my very best for our people, makes it possible to make a tough decision, perhaps the toughest of my life, to announce that I have decided not to seek re-election for the Louisiana State Senate in 1991. As most of you know, I have battled cancer for the last three years. I had hoped that after seeking treatment from three of the finest medical facilities in the country, that by now I could be fully recovered and be able to give my total energy to continuing to serve as your senator. That is not the case. I must preserve my strength and energy to survive this dreaded disease. I will not attempt to serve unless I can be my 100% best. The people of Terrebonne, Lafourche, and Grand Isle deserve no less. I hope you'll always remember me as your Senator Chabert, because I'll never forget you and the support and loyalty that you have given to me. I will continue to fight for my life. I will never give up. I've been planning to do that since the night I got elected. And I sat in my garden, and I knew that uh, it would be a long, hard road to get to this day and to this point. And it was, but I'm glad I walked it, and I'm glad I walked it with so many people in this room. And I thank you for doing that. Because not everybody who's a member gets to say goodbye and gets to say thank you. Some move on to other things. Some are defeated. Some obviously pass away. Those of us who are blessed and lucky to get this opportunity know how hard it is to survive in politics at this level, particularly in these times. But we also know that none of us could have gotten here just on our own. I'm going to take this time right now, and I'm going to thank a lot of people that have gotten me here. Obviously, I want to start with my very small family, as you can see. Y'all, they have been through so much. My mother, Viona, has been through so many campaigns. And contrary to popular belief, we haven't won them all. My father lost his first bid for the legislature, as did my brother. My brother-in-law, O'Neill, lost a house race. Best thing that ever happened to him, by the way. And though I've been fairly successful in my elections uh, through the years, going all the way back to the St. Joseph CYO, I thought for sure when I lost that race, for Nickel State Homecoming King, 
to that kid from the dorm, I thought it was going to kill my mama. <laughs> but seriously, all the campaigns that they've had to endure over the years, all the signs they had to put up, all the stickers they had to wear, the rallies, the dealing with all of the negati negativity, we all know how big of a part negativity is in this business. And it's our families who suffer it the most because, you know, we asked for this. They did not. Before I was a senator, obviously I was a senator's brother and senator's son, and uh, I'm not kidding when I tell you. I grew up thinking that anti Chabert was an actual political party down the bio. I mean, look, we, we won, but boy, it was close sometimes, yeah. Who? But dad chose to do it, Marty chose to do it, Neil chose to do it, I chose to do it. Our families did not, but they stood by us and they took it, just like yours stood by you, and they've taken it. I appreciate the fact that, uh, <laughs> I remember when I told my mom I was gonna run, and <laughs> she has this way, and you know, she don't say a whole lot, but when she does, uh, she says frick a lot. I think that's allowable by the rules. And I'm 90% sure she was like, frick, Norby. Like, I gotta do this again? And only one day did I think that she did not want to do it again. But, thank God I was right. Every day after that, she stood by my side. Just like she did everybody else in our families. Anytime we're going through a trial or a tribulation. So to my family, I thank you and I appreciate you. I love you, every single one. Um, I'll mention a few of you by name a little later. I hope the rest of you don't get mad if I don't, because love is love. And for the rest of y'all, I don't think you gotta worry. Cameron Schaubert came work for me, Marty's son, one summer. I don't think he got a knack for politics. He's definitely a businessman, but I warn you, we got a little 10 year old girl in our family called Charlie Francis' son. I'd watch out for that one if I was y'all. As far as my friends, I'm blessed. I've got a lot of them. And like my family, I'm not gonna be able to mention them all. But the speech being what it is, I'm gonna try to keep my tribe down to the ones that have been really impactful to me during this part of my life. First, uh, the guys I kind of call my cabinet, Ben Landry, Mike LaRussa, Matt Gresham, Mike Mathern. These are the guys who I first went to when I was deciding to run. I got their counsel, got their advice. They told me when they thought something was smart. They told me when something was flat out stupid, don't do that. And that's all you can ask for from people that you seek counsel from. I'll never forget when Ben Landry and I sat in my kitchen frying boudin and he basically wrote up my entire campaign on a yellow legal pad in one afternoon. He's the one that uh, convinced me to emphasize my first name, not my last name. That's where the whole I'm with Norby thing came from. And the old guard Chabert supporters, some of them that are here, thought that was a huge mistake. They thought I should go with the family's traditional colors and fonts. You saw a few of them up there. I can't emphasize to you how big of a choice and a gamble that was. But either I was going to ride the legacy or be my own man. And it was those men I just mentioned, along with a few men women I'll mention later, that gave me the confidence to do that. And they were right. I went with my own emphasizing Norby, changed my colors to red. And the rest, as they say, is history. To that old guard I mentioned earlier, Big Perry, Jim Ernie, SP, Clifford Smith, Dickie Bark, and so many other men, I thank you. Y'all were the team around my father and brother, and you supported me against high odds and an incumbent. We didn't always agree on how to win the race, but y'all ran it with me, 
and you're always loyal Shaw Bear supporters, and I will never forget that. To my confidants, Gina, Kana, Julie Bernard, Elise Io, Christy A. Bear, Brandon Rutley, Paul Claymore, The Dusty, Seneca Toussaint, and of course, Clint Guidry, Mr. Casey. These are the people I spent late nights with, weekends, questioning myself, facing my doubt, my insecurity. The struggles of service were heavy, and they kept me strong. And sometimes they were just hanging out with me, having a drink, burning some firewood. But when you don't have a wife or a child, your friends are all you got, and they meant the world to me. And I'll be honest with you, if me and Mr. Casey didn't have those two martini lunches every now and then, I might need therapy. And then there are those blessed and lucky people who had to actually professionally work for me when I was serving. Sweet baby Jesus, those poor people. They didn't know a whole lot about this process, and they were down there, and I was up here. Matt Bolot, Chrissy Guidry, Rachel Hoganstad, Rory S.J., Ryan Dutu, Mikey Valencia, Aaron Mathern, Kayla Cox, and Miss Lindsay Sinak. There have been many others, but these folks are my core. They had to deal with me when I would drive in angry on a Thursday from here, and we'd fight all weekend about business, and then we'd text all the next week and repeat the cycle. And when you're in the hospitality industry, you expected to hear a lot of nonsense, but you're supposed to keep religion and politics out the bar. Now, how are you going to do that when your state senator is the owner and Gordy Dove is your best customer? <laughs> but man, they handled it. And they probably got a PhD in politics from the other side of the counter. And I think, I really, I really thank you. My session aides have always meant a lot to me. And it goes back to working here and growing up here. Uh, Kathleen Bordelon was with me for two terms. And uh, I'll be honest with you, she did an amazing thing. And I witnessed, I witnessed it here. Senator Clater, I believe, it might have been Senator Donahue's aide, uh, Cody Allen Wells, and she ran for LSU student body president and vice president. And all of the aides here that were at LSU rallied behind them, and they got them elected. Now, as you know, the LSU president has, can't have a job working for the state because he serves on the LSU Board of Supervisors, so he had to resign. But Kathleen worked with me every day and, and kept me on track, and she had the bar set very high. Her cousin Elise, who is a wonderful young woman, uh, followed her but wasn't as good as Kathleen. And then uh, I've had a few others, old Carson, my nephew Cameron, Raven McNabb, um, Brett, uh, who's actually Senator Ali as aide this session, old Kirk Guidry, and my new aide, Savannah Wilmore. I mean, those people, y'all, we hear it all the time, children are our future, they are our future. Kathleen came back when I was sitting on the Board of Commerce and Industry representing a multi-million dollar all field service company and she presented and I was gonna let her go and then I embarrassed her <laughs> but that's who the people that are working for you every day are gonna wind up being that's a couple of people that uh, really paid uh, some heavy prices uh, working for me politically um, Jessica Thornton, who was my friend in college, agreed to work on my campaign, raise money for me, and uh, she had to put up with a lot of bull from me. She'd go toe-to-toe -to -toe with me, but also realized the pressure I was under, and she treated me with the kid gloves she needed to. 
She's still one of my best friends today, and I thank her. Uh, Reagan DePlantis Corpel. Reagan and I grew up together. Like me, she grew up in a family that embraced our culture and wanted to share it with the world. She served our country. And she and her husband, Jimmy, who I played high school football with, uh, brought their entire family of little kids out to volunteer with me on my first campaign. I was lucky to have her say yes when I asked her to manage my last one, which we thought was going to be a breeze, a walk in the park, and it was anything but. And that poor woman, she, she wore it like every attack on me was an attack on her. I'm lucky that she's my friend. You'd lucky to be to have her as your friend too. Uh, many of the folks I've mentioned, they wear a lot of different hats in my life. Kristen Gotro. She worked with me for one session as an aide. She worked with me professionally in the ball business. And when she graduated, I asked her to come back and work my communications on my campaign, and she did that too. And uh, a lot of the big decisions I had to make in that last campaign, she was responsible for. And I'm very thankful that uh, she was able to work for me. My um, legislative assistant, uh, first one, Kelly Walker, she was a volunteer on my campaign. Uh, she stayed with me for a couple of years, but unfortunately in those times we weren't paying them very much. We still ain't paying them very much. And she had a master's degree and went on. Uh, now she's head of the Orleans Realtor Association, very successful young lady. But my current one, uh, Jeannie Ardway, like Reagan, we were lifelong friends and uh, was always volunteering on the campaign. And when we learned that Kelly was uh, going to go seek other opportunities, she was a very natural choice. She has a degree in human resources, uh, handles my constituency services, services to the point where uh, it's like half the time I don't even know about them. More importantly, the ones that she helped thank me, just like your legislative aid does for you. And she does it all while dealing with the home life with a special needs child, Jordan, who's a doll, and a handful for sure. So I'm lucky to have you. And Jeannie, thank you, thank you for everything you did today in coordinating all of this stuff. <clears throat> Alan Miller, you know, when I got reelected, I, uh, I went to Mr. Guillot and I said, well, you know, uh, Alario convinced me to become uh, vice chairman of finance. I know we're in a budget deficit. I said, it's going to be difficult to do. I said, uh, can I trade in my secretary and my analyst for a, uh, for a lawyer? He said, sure. He said, well, who's available? He said, well, you know, Martini brought his whole staff from Jude B. And Alan was staff attorney for commerce, so there was some switch up. I said, well, I like Alan. I served on commerce with John. He says, he's a great bill draft. He's really good. And he says, but he's a little too political for me. I said, he's political? I said, that's the one that I want, because there's a lot of good bill drafters up here. But the more political advice that we can have, uh, the better. And he's been a tremendous counsel for me. And uh, I'm blessed and lucky to have him. Ben Joe Malbrew. Ben's a truly impressive man. Uh, what he's done with the Bailafouche Freshwater District in his short time there is nothing short of miraculous. Uh, the Bailafouche Freshwater District, Senator Price runs all the way from Donisonville down to Fouchon, manage, man, uh, manages the drinking water for all our parishes and all our people. And that thing they did with the train bridge couldn't be done, they said. But Ben got it done. And I tell you, he's the one that I counsel when uh, I have to battle CPRA on certain things. He tells me when I'm right, and he tells me when I'm wrong, and that's all you can ask for. And uh, he's a mighty fine cook. He's a damn good friend. If I ever get married, I want Kirby Blanchard standing by my side. For those of you who've heard me, he's the one I call my brother nephew. Because <laughs> he's, uh, 
Only a couple of months older than me. My sister Lori's second son. He lived in the house behind mine. And uh, he and his lovely wife and their kids live in our family home now. I'm godfather to his children, and I couldn't be happier about that. When I, uh, I talked a lot about the colors and the fonts and the signs, on the night before my last re-election, I wanted to make Big Perry Just Claire cry. So I came up with an idea to get my new signs with the old Bear black and gold colors that everybody loves so much. And Kirby and I went around via Lafouche and Terrebonne Parish, and anybody that had on with Norby yard sign in, we pulled it out, put it in the back of the truck, and stuck a black and gold one. And on election morning in the rain, the first person to call me crying was Perry Just Claire. Now, when you can have a partner that uh, is willing to, to, who is an attorney, mind you, okay, drive the getaway car while you go and violate trespass laws every day and in the dead of the night, that's a loyal son of a gun. And uh, I'm proud of his service. He served six years in the Marine Corps and graduated from LSU uh, Law. And, uh, you know, I, I, I was thinking about it when I wrote this speech. If, if he was Kirby first and I was Norba, and then all of a sudden I become Norby, he's probably the one I had to blame for all that ridicule all these years. Norby and Kirby, I mean, we're like a duet, a tag team or something. It's your fault, Blanche. Your fault. Either way, I'm going to talk about a few of the people uh, that I served with during the first couple of years in this term because... Uh, 2000 and, uh, the 2008 11 term was a tough one. I was in it for two years, and the following term after that was significantly tough. But uh, Gordy Dove, who I mentioned earlier, is, is probably the man has done more for coastal Louisiana than, uh, than just about anybody. Uh, the man who's sitting oddly enough next to him, Reggie Dupre, is right there with him. He wrote all the coastal law that uh, in some cases I had to go back and fix, uh, with his counsel, of course. Sheriff Craig Weber is uh, one of the more respected sheriffs in the state of Louisiana. JP knows him well. He helped him spearhead a lot of that criminal justice reform. Uh, Sheriff Jerry Larpenter has faced probably more natural disasters to Terrebonne Parish uh, over his tenure, and he's retiring, than just about anybody else. I tell you, we all know about the volunteer Cajun Navy Jerry Larpenter has uh, probably the biggest sheriff's navy uh, in the state of Louisiana. It's impressive. And Wendell Curall. Wendell uh, runs the South Lafouche Levy District, and his area has uh, not flooded since 1985. And I think that my good friends at CPRA should uh, listen to him more often uh, and stop fighting him so much. And the last person I, I want to mention was supposed to be up there with me today. Uh, my friend and my confidant, Orlando Williams. Uh, Orlando likes to joke that uh, we knew each other when nobody else did. And, uh, you know, she went on to accomplish great things. She served on our parish council. Um, she's now vice chancellor at Delgado, uh, a tremendous leader, and uh, a, a friend that I owe a lot to politically. And the best part about us is uh, I, I stroke one of them deals where, the, where she don't tell me no, I don't tell her no. That sometimes gets costly, <laughs> but it was a great deal. I'm thankful for it. But enough about them. Let's talk about me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I never sought this office. I certainly never thought I'd win it, much less hold it for three terms. I was recruited by others. As you've heard, I was steadied and encouraged by many family and friends. And through a lot of hard work, be it not, but for the grace of God, I persevered. And most importantly, I earned the continued support of the people from Thibodeau and Homa, from Dulac and Du Large, from Village East and Cocodry, from The Circle and Deweyville, Lockport and La Rose, Galliana and Golden Meta, Gibson and Grand Kaya. My father's home of cut off. 
And of, of course, the area where I never lost a box in any of my elections. And that's a feat that neither my brother nor my father can claim. So I got y'all on that one. The home of the SDHS Gators, who my cousin, Dr. Madge Gotro, is vice principal at. I want to thank the family and friends of Berg, Montague, Chauvin, and Lokaya. I'm forever humbled that you chose me to represent you. But as I said on a hot September night in 2009, at the old Homa Municipal Auditorium, when Justice John Weimer swore me this oath of office. And then I echoed it in the last campaign spot I ever shot in the most competitive race I'll ever be in, and Roy Fletcher did that one too. It's not about I, and it's not about me. It's always gonna be about us, and it's always gonna be about we. My service has been to and for my people first, for that fisherman trying to get a good price at the dock, for that cancer patient trying to get an appointment at the hospital, for that first generation kid from the bayou who's trying to improve their life with a quality education from Nichols and Fletcher. And for all the people living in harm's way across our coast, who are in desperate need of comprehensive flood protection and coastal restoration. In that order, Mr. Klein, you heard that? Protection and restoration. I've been blessed and lucky to serve this state that I so dearly love. It has been my honor and my privilege to do it besides you here in the Senate of the state of Louisiana. Thank you.